Hey Winfrey Church, hope you're doing well. I'm here in the wide open spaces, actually in front of our beautiful church here in Midlothian, Virginia. I mean, look at that. That is a beautiful, that's a beautiful church. It's a beautiful day, beautiful sky. We are a couple days away from Thanksgiving. Wonderful time to be thankful for our church. Um, be thankful for the world that we live in, that God has given us. Be thankful for our country. Be thankful for our families. Be thankful for so many blessings that God has given us. I wanted to entitle um, this devotional, Permission to be Joyful. Permission to be Joyful. Often we hear when we are grieving, somebody's passed away or we're going through a hard time, people will say, you have permission to grieve. It's okay. You have permission to grieve. Because sometimes we want to hold it in and we're just not sure that it's okay to grieve. And people and God can remind us in those times, hey, it's a very natural process. Go ahead and grieve. It's part of the Lord's um, reconstruction. It's part of his healing in that journey. So I want to encourage us today on the eve of Thanksgiving that it is also okay that we have permission to be joyful that we have permission to rejoice. And that's a hard thing to think about right now because there's so many things going on in our lives personally, around the world, in our country, that it, it just seems hard to feel permission to be joyful. You know, there's been a lot of talk about the dark winter coming with COVID and everything else. And, you know, while that is true in some sense because, you know, winter is a, a breeding ground for a thing like a virus, at the same time, that's we have more hope than that as christians we have more joy than that as christians we have more peace and more faith as christians because we know that god is the x factor and so it doesn't have to be a dark winter it can be a time that we rejoice because we know that we have the lord with us when i was in college i ran for student body president <clears throat> and um it was a uh it was a tough race, as they as they say. Um, you know, I'm looking at all the election stuff now, and I'm thinking, oh my gosh, I didn't have a clue back then. <laughs> you know, I thought running for student body president was the biggest thing in the world, and uh, you see the things going on right now, and you're like, that was just that was nothing. You know, but at the time, it was a big deal in my life. You know, and there was three of us running, uh, and I campaigned. I campaigned hard. I, I did everything I could to convince people to vote for me, that I was the right choice and all that stuff. And um, it got down to, like I said, there were three people running. The first person got knocked off in, in the first run and it was down to me and this other girl. And she was very popular on campus and well-liked and you know, smart, all that, had a lot of good ideas. And so, uh, so I campaigned hard. I actually wrote a handwritten note I typed, I typed it up and then I signed it by hand and it said, let me be your president and I won't let you down. And I put one of those in every student's uh, little mailbox in their dormitories. And it wasn't a huge school, but it was, you know, about 14, 1500 students. So that was a lot of hand signatures. Anyway, the race is going on. I was working at a restaurant at the time <clears throat> and, um, you know, I was, I was excited. I was, I was thinking I had a good chance. Um, and the eve of the election, you know, came, people were voting, uh, and I just remember the anticipation that I had. You know, I was at the restaurant working, just kind of waiting for the news to come in. And as the night went on, I really was getting sure that I was gonna win. <clears throat> um, I had a lot of people telling me that and just kind of the feeling that they had. And so uh, I was excited and getting ready, you know, for that phone call. And then every, you know, every hour that would go by i kind of have this other thought oh my gosh i shouldn't rejoice too early i don't know the results aren't in yet i mean it's just so funny what's going on in our elections right now i mean that's how i felt like i don't know maybe there's still a chance this and that back and forth finally you know 9 9 30 the results came in i got the phone call and i was the student body president of my college and i could finally let go i could finally rejoice i could finally high five everybody and i could have the joy that i had been waiting for all that time. It's easy to rejoice when we're on the other side of something. It's not so easy to rejoice when we're in the middle of something. When Moses and, and the Israelites crossed the Red Sea, they had nowhere to turn. And a, and a little while before they crossed, they were convinced they were gonna die, that Pharaoh got them, and they even said to Moses, why have you brought us out in this desert to die? 
Then they got to the other side, the cloud came through, God came through, the wind came through, the sea parted, they walked through on dry ground, and they got to rejoice on the other side because they had seen the victory that they thought was so uncertain. It's easy to rejoice on the other side. But what God calls us to do, what the Bible calls us to do, what our faith tells us to do, it tells us to rejoice in all circumstances. It tells us to rejoice even on the other side of the Red Sea. It tells us to rejoice even before the election results came, you know, came in, like for me that night. Um, it tells us to rejoice because God knows that our rejoicing, our joy, our praise, our worship, that all of those are powerful tools for us to live the life that God wants us to live. They are the X factor, our joy, our praise, our worship, having that mentality, rejoicing even before we're on the other side is key to our spiritual lives. But it's not just to make us feel better. There's actually spiritual power in our lives rejoicing before we're on the other side because we're recognizing that it doesn't matter what this winter looks like. It doesn't matter what happens in our, in our government. It doesn't matter what's happening and swirling around me. It matters because it's happening, but I have God. I have the ultimate X factor. I have the one who has created everything. I have the one who's created the sky. I have the one who's created the trees. I have the one who's created this church behind me. I have the one who's created every life of everyone who goes to this church behind me. And so on the eve of Thanksgiving, God is calling us to rejoice. He's calling us to praise him. He's calling us to do it in the middle of dark times. He's calling us to do it before we're on the other side of the Red Sea. He's calling us to do it because that's what his people do. And he knows, and the enemy knows too, that when we do that, not only do we feel better, which is nice, but things change. Things actually change because we're focused on the right things, we're focused on the right person, and that must have been why Paul said emphatically rejoice in all things. Rejoice in all circumstances. Rejoice in the Lord always. And even again, I say rejoice. Set your mind on the things that are above. Set your mind on the things that are good and noble and pure and trustworthy. Have hope, have faith, have peace because we know who God is and we know that he's moving and we know that he's working and we empower the work of God in this world by rejoicing and focusing our mind on the things above, focusing our hearts on him. So happy Thanksgiving, rejoice, spend some time rejoicing and having joy and, and doing whatever it is that you need to do to let that joy well up inside of you, no matter what you see. And I promise you, you will see a difference in your life and you'll see a difference in the world around you. Be blessed, happy Thanksgiving, bye-bye.